Uh, a good morning to you all, and thank you for joining this webinar. My name is Rollings, your host, and I am with Agri Business uh, Media. And I do hope that uh, you will benefit from the business of wheat production uh, webinar. I also hope that you are staying safe from COVID-19. So we are live on Agri Business Media Facebook page as well as Slime Media uh, Facebook page. And I hope you can hear us clearly. And uh, if not, please drop us uh, a message in the chat uh, section. If you are not presenting, we kindly ask you to please turn off your uh, video and audio, but we'll also try to control that from at uh, this end. So the aim of this webinar is to, is to discuss the A to Z of wheat production business. That is risk management, variety selection, good agronomic practices, soil fertility, crop health, economics of production, and more. You will also get direct contacts for the key stakeholders in the wheat value chain. So how the webinar is going to unfold is we are going to have informative uh, presentations from experts in the industry. Uh, and then we'll give you farmers and participants uh, a chance to ask you questions right after all the presentations. So uh, during the presentations, you can also send your comments and questions via the comments or chat uh, section. So today we are joined by uh, Wendy Mazura. She is the head of agronomy uh, services with SIDCO Zimbabwe. We also have Mr. Zivana Igonzo. He is uh, the technical advisor and is with uh, uh, ZFC. We also have Desmond Zimuto. He's a, a qualified uh, agronomist with a Zimunat THI insurance. So no doubt that we do have the right experts to discuss the business of wheat uh, production. So as we start, the market really plays a key role in converting our production efforts into cash. How is our demand for wheat production versus uh, production? So, to help us in answering this, we were supposed to be joined by Mr. Musarara, who is the chairman uh, of the Grain Millers Association of Zimbabwe. Uh, but unfortunately, he had uh, an emergency to, to attend to. But what we'll do is we are going to have an interview with him as soon as possible, then we'll share on our platforms. So as we move on, most farm business opportunities have at least one single fatal flaw that will lead to failure. Could this be poor agronomic practices? Let us invite Wendy Mazura, the seed, uh, the seed course head of agronomy to help us to see how we can do it right. Wendy, you can uh, go for it. Uh, morning to you all. My name is Wendy Mazura, as you have rightfully heard. And um, today I'm going to be presenting on uh, uh, the profitable wheat uh, production window that we are about to, to get into. So the presentation, uh, allow me to just share the presentation. Sure, please do. Please confirm that you can see the presentation from your end. Yeah, sure, confirm. Thank you very much. So we have already had the opening remarks there from our, our host, and we are just going to get right into the presentation. The presentation layout is going to be as follows. We'll start by highlighting the importance of wheat in Zimbabwe. We'll then look at climate, soil, land uh, preparation requirements, 
like you rightfully said, um, we want to understand where the farmers are dropping the ball for them not to realize the much value that is there in wheat production. We'll then look at varietal choice and seed rates. Then we'll look at time of planting, which is quite topical because today in the morning, I got about four calls from 6, uh, 6 30 in the morning until now on farmers who wanted to start planting their wheat. So we'll discuss that. We'll then look at irrigation scheduling and monitoring, hardening. What is hardening? Fertilizer rates um, in brief because we have the expert on fertilizer today and agrochemicals. They'll then delve into it deeper. We we'll then look at harvesting and record keeping while we, uh, while we discuss uh, some of the issues to do with wheat production. So to begin with, we want to understand why wheat is an important crop for us as a country, as a nation and globally. Wheat is the second most important cereal crop after maize and the annual requirement for wheat in Zimbabwe ranges between around 300, some say 350 to around 400,000 metric tons annually and the production in the 2021 season set at around 212,530 metric tons which is to say we have significantly improved in terms of our production of wheat annually but there is still a gap for us to meet for us to really get the value out of wheat production and regain our bread basket status which we used to have in the in the in the in the years when production was still high so we also understand that due to the unforeseen uh, circumstances that are happening in other countries globally there might be a shortage of wheat so we also need to tap into that so that we get the much needed foreign currency but however productivity is affected by uh, various factors which might hinder or reduce the level of production which is why um Agribusiness thought it prudent for us to have this well-timed webinar to discuss some of the areas where you can also find value, add value and increase productivity in wheat production. So if we are able to increase our wheat production, the import bill would be reduced greatly and we'll be able to attain uh, food security, food self-sufficiency. And we want to go a step above that and get food surplus because with surplus, you are then able to sell to other countries and then also use the money to, to develop other sectors of the economy. Sustainable development goals, uh, number one and two, will then be met as we also move towards attaining the sustainable development, the 17 sustainable development goals by 2030. So the profit story. Nowadays, there's talk of farming more as a formidable business than an extracurricular activity. So we want to understand the dynamics that speak to the profit story, the profitability of wheat production. So earlier on in the week, we managed to have um, uh, um, a webinar with the Ministry of Agriculture's lead wheat specialist who highlighted the, the, the figures that we are seeing there on the screen. And he managed to tell us that we, the target area that we are aiming for is around uh, 75,000 hectares. Then uh, the national requirement, uh, like we rightfully said, 350 to 400,000. So the breakdown is there for CBZ Agro, as you can see, and then, then for AFC, then the private sector, while the presidential input scheme, which set at 5,500 hectares, has been increased to 10,000 hectares, which is also going to impact on the, on the target area, which is going up to around uh, 85,000 um, hectares. So that is the information that we got from the uh, chief agronomist um, in the Ministry of Agriculture for wheat production. So they, the team that uh, the ministry is running with and the private sector running is also running with uh, concurrently with the ministry is flower self-sufficiency at all costs. So it means everyone needs to jump onto the bandwagon. Uh, whether you have a small area under irrigation doesn't matter as long as you intensify your production levels, you will be able to reach the target. Then the markets and producer prices are as highlighted there where we are seeing that GMB uh, is the main market that we sell to and they are uh, people I'm sure who are going to speak to that. Then we also have millers um, like the highlighted ones, but the list is not exhaustive. Then last season, the producer price uh, standard wheat was at around uh, 56, while the premium was at around 66,000. But for this year, Suffice to say that the price, the pre-planting price looks very lucrative where we are looking at around 175,000 to 192,000 um, RTGS dollars um, uh, being awarded to a farmer who will have done uh, quite well, the higher margin being for premium wheat.
So this is very important for us to understand and we need to uh, buckle our boots and make sure that we are also doing the needful to get this value in our pockets and smile all the way to the bank. So production of wheat, in terms of the, 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 temperature, uh, the environment that wheat requires, wheat is a temperate crop. It's grown in winter and uh, the temperatures that it requires uh, range between 15 to 20 degrees, which is why we talk of the winter wheat uh, uh, season starting around May. Then it's also adapted to a wide range of soil types, but with the optimum pH level will be at around 5.5 to 6.5. I'm sure Mr. Gonzo is going to speak more on that as he also unpacks nutrient requirements. So in terms of the, um, the areas where wheat can be produced in the high veld, uh, because of the altitude that is there, the yield level tends to be highest. In the middle veld, it can go as high as 7 to 10 tons, while in the low veld, because of the high heat units that do not allow for the accumulation of dry matter, the, heat, um, the yield level can reach around 4.5 to 7 tons per hectare. The planting dates also differ for the different areas within the with the low veld being the earliest in terms of planting where we recommend plantings to be done end of april um while for the middle and high veld the optimum planting dates as you will see will range from 1 may to 15 may though earlier plantings can uh, come up uh, if farmers also want to do double cropping or come in with other crops like tobacco or the early summer crop so agriculture is very dynamic. Uh, new climate uh, smart varieties are continuously being developed in a bid to move hand in glove with the changes that are happening because of climate change and also just modernization and technological advancement. So characteristics of good wheat varieties include high yield potential, crop stature, where you find that the crop stature will speak to the uh, lodging ability of the crop in the field and the ability of the farmer to also put in higher plant populations without the risk of lodging. Disease resistance, tolerance to moisture stress, as well as the much talked about baking qualities nowadays, because in the previous seasons, there was no demarcation of a farmer who has a premium grade and a standard grade wheat. But now you can tell from the value that you will get if you aim to increase the quality of your wheat and get premium wheat. If with, and with premium wheat, we find that the need for us to get grist in wheat to blend with our own wheat will then be reduced because we can still use that uh, our own wheat uh, for baking without needing to mix it with other wheat if it's the quality is good enough. In terms of the varieties, which is why I'm here today, there are a thousand reasons for crop failure, but you need to understand that it starts with the genetics. It starts with the right seed. With the right seed, you then unpack it with good agronomic practices. So Essin Duna is a white seeded, tried, tested, top performing variety, which has been on the market for a while. But because it has been on the market for a while, it tends to be more susceptible to leaf rust. So there is need for us to embrace new seed technologies that are advanced because they come with benefits. So that's where we find the SC Select and SC Serena. These are wide seeded uh, varieties with SC Select having disease resistance to leaf rust. And it is a high, the, the highest protein content of 13%, while the minimum mark for the protein content for you to get into premium is 11. So it's quite high and commendable. Then the wet gluten, which speaks to the elasticity of the wheat as well as the, the baking quality and test density, is also at 32.5. SC Serena is the new blockbuster that we are releasing because we believe in continuous improvement. So in terms of the yield, it will reach up to 9 and 10 tons per hectare under optimum management. So this variety is highly recommended and the disease tolerance is also something for us to really look at and it's quite commendable. In terms of the summer wheat, we have one variety on the market, SC Sahai. But the challenge that comes with summer is that disease pressure is also high. So you will not uh, realize the yield potential that you realize in winter because the conditions also do not favor increased yield levels. But you find that uh, the summer wheat variety, SC Sahai, uh, will also come in to complement the standard wheat which will have been produced in winter as we move towards attaining our annual requirement of 350 to 400,000 metric tons. In terms of the seed rate, which speaks to the plant populations, because yield is a function of two things, yield per plant and yield per unit area. The optimum plant population sits at 220 to 250 plants 
um, per square meter. So this, for the, to achieve this, depending on the method of planting being used, you can um, apply a seed rate of 110 to 125 kgs per hectare for a seed drill, which as you can see on the right there, is a precision tool that goes directly into the ground and only tills the area where it's going to plant. So it's uh, more precise in terms of the seed placement. Unlike the broadcasting uh, uh, and spreading tools of planting, which farmers can use, that include the Vicon spreader, mm -hmm. which requires a seed rate of around 125 to 135 kgs per hectare. So why is it important for us to catch the planting window? Why is it a topical issue and why are we here today? It's important for us to understand that if we are able to catch the planting window, we'll be able to harvest wheat before the onset of the rains. If it rains and the wheat crop is still in the field, it starts sprouting and the falling numbers are affected, thereby reducing the grade even to below the standard level. You can get even um, uh, the price for, for stock feed. So it's important for us to catch the planting window so that we avert the rains. The high pest and disease pressure is also important for us to understand that if we plant early, we avoid it. Critical growth stages uh, also may occur at the right time if we are able to start on time. Then double cropping is also achieved. So the best yield is achieved with plantings done in the first two weeks of May because most of the wheat plantings occur in the high veld and the middle veld. Delayed plantings result in uh, also yield losses. So these are just the growth stages of wheat, uh, which need to co to okay at the optimum times and the, uh, require the optimum conditions. So you find that tillering is a stage that requires cool conditions to okay. Um, also stages such as heading uh, and booting do not uh, want to okay at a time when there is frost, so we need to be guided accordingly. So in terms of land preparation, I won't dwell on this in the interest of time, but it's important for us to understand that the seed we are using is very small. So we need to make sure that we uh, have a fine tilt so that there's good seed to soil contact. So in some instances, some farmers will come in with, the, with their land preparation, they then broadcast their seed, then come in with the roller to incorporate the seed. But some farmers then come in with the roller just before they plant their seed, then they irrigate as they irrigate uh, with a fine tilt, you will be able to see a bit of coverage of the seed because you also don't want the seed to be exposed on the surface. Then uh, when planting, it's important to irrigate to field capacity. Then after field capacity is achieved, uh, you can also come in at around four, uh, day four, day five, uh, after emergence uh, is started to break the crusty layer so that emergence occurs uh, optimally. Then in terms of our irrigation scheduling, this is very important because the time we plant wheat, there's no supplementary, uh, supplementary rains that are going to come in to complement. So before you venture into a, a wheat uh, cropping um, venture, you need to understand the amount of water that you have. Is it enough to sustain the crop from planting right through to harvesting? So you need 450 to 600 millimeters, which is 4.5 to 6 megaliters. So irrigation scheduling really starts uh, when you start establishing your crop, but after emergence, you then harden the crop for, 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 for about 10 to 14 days for you to get the crown roots. And then uh, it also differs depending on the soil type that you have and the water holding capacity, as well as the tool which is being used, where for a center pivot, irrigation can come in uh, at 22 mils after five days, while for lateral, uh, for the sprinklers, you can come in at 10 to 14 day cycles and uh, applying 40 to 45 millimeters because it holds more water. But there again, you need to be guided by the conditions that are there on the field because nowadays there are challenges with electricity. So you need to adjust accordingly. And you don't want to judge irrigation efficiency by looking at the soil. You need to come in with an auger so that you can check on the level of water before irrigation and after irrigation to see if you have applied enough. So this is still about irrigation scheduling. Uh, it's a well irrigated crop is dark green, while a stressed crop is bluish, hard, spiky with rolled leaves. And if you just look at the uh, general outlook of the field, you can even see the background because there is not enough canopy. Why is it important for us to harden? It promotes tillering and introduces crown roots development. So hardening in sandy soils, recommended time is 10 days, while in clay soils, you can do up to 14 days because that soil can hold more water as long as you've achieved field capacity at germination. 
So it's uh, for nutrition management, I'll leave that to uh, the next speaker when they come through, as well as weed management. So termination of irrigation, as we move towards concluding, maturity is reached when the peduncle, which is the area just under the neck and the stem, the area where the stem meets the neck, uh, the stem meets the head, that small piece of um, joint that exists there is the peduncle. So if it turns yellow, then you know that maybe physiological maturity has, has been achieved. Also, physiological maturity can be gauged by the yellowing of the crop in the field. But this can be a tricky attribute because sometimes diseases might have occurred and early senescence can start. So the best way to judge is also to use the days to maturity of the variety in question, guided by the altitude, which also speaks to the heat unit. So harvesting can be done manually, it can be done mechanically depending on the tools that are available. So it's important for you towards harvesting to make sure that everything is lined up so that you won't be found wanting. So with, in conclusion, you need to plan ahead. You need soil conditioning and fertilization to be done optimally as these are part of the genetics, uh, uh, as, as these are part of the good agronomic practice that unlock the value from your genetics. Start at field capacity when you irrigate so that your crop gets enough warm moisture to go through the hardening window. Then establishment irrigation is also to do with the field capacity being achieved. Ensure that crown root development and tillering occurs then weed, disease, and pest pressure should be managed. Timing of irrigation guided by the irrigation schedule should also be done. Then it's important for us to keep irrigation records because the time we plant with, there's no rainwater. So you need to understand as you plan for the next season whether or not you applied enough irrigation water so that you can uh, redo your irrigation schedule. But above all, you need to keep all records because all records are going to guide your next decisions in terms of your cropping, uh, be it uh, uh, the scouting regime, be it the fertilizer management, all these need to be done optimally so that you also get uh, more information and make informed decisions. On that note, I'd like to thank you all uh, for awarding me this opportunity to present and to remind you that at Sitco we have the right genetics for you. So come through and buy your wheat seed on time because you know what happens. Those what burns on the shelf, they sell fast. So you need to make sure that you come and buy on time and start planting your seed on time. Thank you very much, uh, Agribusiness, for this opportunity. Uh, many thanks, Dan Wendy, for that great uh, presentation. And you do mention uh, key issues there on the varieties, on uh, planting time, the economics, and all the good agronomic practices uh, uh, from planting right to harvesting, thus uh, advising us on uh, the best ways to uh, unlock the value from the seed genetics. Uh, thank you very much. So to farmers, there's still uh, a gap in, in wheat production that we uh, need to fill, uh, thus ensuring uh, self-sufficiency uh, as uh, a country. And just a reminder to our participants watching on Facebook and uh, here on Zoom, uh, keep the questions and comments coming uh, through the chat section or the comments uh, section. It is said that the nation that destroys itself, uh, its soil destroys itself. Soil health and crop protection are part of the key building blocks of every successful uh, farming operation. How can we protect our wheat crops and maintain a healthy soil? Let me invite uh, Mr. Zewanai Gonzo. He is the technical advisor with ZFC. Mr. Zewanai Gonzo, you can go for it. Thank you, Ngoma uh, Rollins. I don't know whether my screen is, is visible or not. Uh, not as yet. Yes, the screen is visible, but not the presentation as yet. Okay. How about now? 
uh, seems it's still the same. Okay, let me stop sharing and, and, and restart. Ah, yes, we can see it now. Thank you. Okay, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Zwanai Konzo. Technical advisor with CRFC, and I would like to thank Agribusiness Talk for allowing us uh, to talk today regarding uh, wheat production. <clears throat> we are ZRFC, and uh, as you all know, ZRFC plays a critical role in the you know uh, wheat production value chain. And I would also want to thank uh, uh, Wendy for a presentation because. Uh, the two of us, uh, we complement uh, each other. They are very good genetics. Uh, we then come in to, 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 to unleash uh, the potential in their, in their varieties. So the synergy is very good. Today, ladies and gentlemen, I want to talk about uh, soil fertility and crop health uh, regarding uh, uh, wheat. So with, because of our time, I'll go straight into my presentation. And... Uh, uh, the presentation will be centered on crop nutrition and, uh, and, and crop health, which is crop protection, which are the services, you know, that we sell at ZFC. So in terms of nutrition, timing of application and rate of application is very important, uh, where we talk about the four other principles uh, of crop nutrition management. Are you applying the right type of fertilizer? Are you applying it at the right time? Are you placing it correctly? And are you applying uh, the, the right amount? And when it comes to crop uh, protection, we are saying yield and quality uh, uh, are also affected if you do not take care of your of your, of your crop a uh, uh, crop take crop you know crop protection. So what are we saying? We are saying a number of factors affect fertilizer decisions. Remember uh, when we talked about different varietal potential of different varieties. Uh, some may give you four, some are giving you up to 12 tons a day, depending on where you are. And also another factor to consider is your target yield. What sort of yield are you uh, targeting to get? Uh, and most importantly, soil analysis. How many of us are analyzing their soils? How many of us know the nutritional status uh, of, of their soils? It's very important for you to make proper uh, fertilizer decisions uh, following a soil analysis that will have been done. You know, at ZFC, we offer a expert soil analysis service where farmers can bring in their soils and we analyze, we do pH analysis, we do uh, full analysis, we also do a uh, premium analysis. So it is my advice to our farmers to bring their soils so that they make proper uh, decisions. When it comes to varietal potential, you cannot apply the same amount of uh, nutrition uh, to varieties that give a uh, different uh, uh, yield potentials, for example, uh, the one that's giving you 12 tons and the one that is giving you uh, four tons per hectare. So what are we saying? We are saying uh, major nutrients that are required by the crop are your primary nutrients, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. And also secondary nutrients like sulfur are very important. As you all know, sulfur uh, it forms part of your, of, of your protein and protein is very important when it comes to wheat quality. And nowadays, uh, the issue of sulfur is 
it's become very topical uh, because every farmer wants to produce premium quality wheat. And we are saying uh, we have products that you can use to, uh, it, to, to, to add sulfur to your fields. We have a gypsum. Gypsum is a, the cheapest source of sulfur. You can come and get your, uh, uh, your gypsum and apply it before uh, or during uh, land preparation uh, to supply sulfur. Sulfur and calcium are, in, are found in, in, in gypsum. Uh, others may come in with ammonium sulfate as, as a foliar spray or even a side dressings or a top dressing, but you have to be very careful when you're using ammonium sulfate because uh, it, 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 it contributes to a uh, formation of, of, of acidity or acidic soils. So if you don't want to have such problems, you may come in with your gypsum as, 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 a, as a soil conditioner before, before you plant. Uh, so I'm talking about a seven ton wheat crop. I know when they talked about 12 tons, which is very important, uh, but for a seven ton wheat crop, we are saying you need to come in with 180 kgs per hectare of nitrogen, 80 to about 100 kgs per hectare of phosphate, which is your P2O5, 40 to 50 kgs of uh, potash or potassium, which is your K2O. But you, there are considerations that you have to make. To so those farmers who are in areas where there are soils uh, fixed, potash, you know, marsh waste, mangura area, you need to apply a product that contains a little bit more of, of phosphorus, of, of, sorry, of potash. But uh, remember, to those who are in areas where there are no challenges of potassium fixing uh, soils, wheat is a cereal which consumes potash luxuriously. So you have to be very careful on your selection of, 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 of products. So another important point in, in terms of nutrition is that there's no benefit in applying more amounts of one nutrient if the others are in short supply. This is a very important point, what we call the Leibniz law of the minimum, which states that your yield is, 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 is affected by the scariest scarcest resource, you know, a nutrient or a resource. For example, you may apply tons and tons of nitrogen, tons and tons of potassium, tons and tons of phosphorus. As long as magnesium is in short supply, your yield is affected. So it boils down to the point that you need to have your soils, you know, analyzed. Trace elements are also important when it comes to, to wheat production, the most important one is your copper. You cannot guess whether there is enough copper in your soil. You only have to do a soil analysis. So when you need to uh, add in such, I mean, the element copper, you may come in with uh, a five to 7.5 kgs of soil applied copper. You can also do a foliar spray at 750 grams per hectare. Zinc is also very important, but normally ap applied uh, to, to a crop that comes before you plant your wheat because copper and zinc, they are antagonistic. You know, they compete. So if you apply both of them, they fight. Okay, magnesium is, so, is also very important and uh, the use of dolomitic, uh, Lime uh, helps to supply magnesium. You can also come in with your magnesium uh, sulfur. So what options do we have at ZFC for you to use? We are saying you can come in with ZFC maize fat, which is your 7147 at 600 kgs per hectare. These rates or recommendations are generic. 600 kgs per hectare, where you are getting 42 kgs of nitrogen, 84 P2O5, 42 K2O, and about 48 of sulfur. You may choose to come in with ZFC double D, 
1,400, where you apply half the amount at 300, but supplying the same amount of nutrients. You may also come in with ZFC ID. This product, I would say, is the, is the only a granulated high analysis serial fertilizer on the market. It's very good. ZFC ID 102010 at 400 kgs per hectare, which is, which is supplying 40 kgs nitrogen, 80 kgs uh, P2O5, 40 kgs K2O, and about 28 kgs of sulfur. You may also come in with any other formulation, you know, based on soil analysis, where you're saying uh, we can do a customized blend for you, uh, basing on the results of, soil, of, 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 of your soil analysis. Uh, we have done quite a number of customized blends for, for, for our customers. Uh, you, we can do the same for you. There are other considerations like your 62323 or even 82323, depending on the soil analysis results. And when it comes to nitrogen, we are saying no one size fits all. Someone who is in clay soil areas, we are saying you apply 180 kgs per hectare. To those who are in sands, you apply a little bit more, about 200 kgs per hectare of nitrogen. So what are the sources that you need to use? You can come in with AN, 400 to 600 kgs per hectare, depending on the circumstances that we've discussed. You may choose to apply urea at 300 to 400 kgs per hectare. Urea is a bit more concentrated uh, than AN. Urea is 46%, whereas AN is 34.5%. Uh, uh, and application of nitrogen, we are saying four to eight weeks. And if you are in heavier soils, you can apply all of the nitrogen at once. But if you are in sandy soils, you may do a split application, but make sure that all the nitrogen has been applied within eight weeks. Then, when it comes to trace elements, we have a product that we are advising farmers to use. And we have quite a number of farmers who have used this product, this product called Folia 15. Folia 15 is a, is a, is a specialty product. Fertilizer knows that, that you apply onto the leaves. It gives you the trace elements, including magnesium, manganese, zinc, copper, iron, boron, as well as your primary nutrients, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potash, plus sulfur. It's a very good product and it comes in with an inbuilt uh, water, so you don't need to apply any wetting agents. Uh, we are saying apply it at least three times where the face spray is applied once tillers start forming. The, you then need to repeat during the piping stage and then lastly during ear formation. So if you, if, if, if you apply uh, this fertilizer pro program, you'll have applied all the 16 you know, essential elements that are needed for normal crop growth and development. Then when it comes to crop protection, as LFC, we have a number of crop protection uh, solutions for you. I'll start with uh, weed control options. And uh, in, as you know, weeds you know, may reduce your yield with about 40 to even 50% of, 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 of grain reduction. And uh, uh, weeds also may interfere with your operations, like your harvesting operations, and then uh, they end up, you know, uh, spoiling uh, your 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 yield, and uh, you get a poor quality and downgrading. So it's very important that you keep your weeds, your your field as weed free as possible. Uh, with products like your dicamba, your your met sulfur on methyl, which you can also, which you can just apply it three to four grams uh, per hectare, uh, controlling mostly your broadleaf weeds and volunteer soya bean, including fat and uh, this one can be used even on, on seed crops. 
MCPA two to three liters per, per, per hectare for broadleaf weeds, including fat hen and uh, tribenuron methyl, which you only need about 15 grams uh, for the control of your broadleaf weeds and volunteer soybeans. Then phenoxaprop p-methyl is another very important uh, product to those who normally do maize wheat uh, uh, rotations or uh, sorghum wheat rotations. This one will take care of your volunteer maize and sorghum uh, in wheat, and you only need about 600 to 900 mils per hectare. You may also come in with mixes where you, you mix dicamba and metsulfuron methyl at 150 mils per hectare dicamba and just 2.5 grams of, uh, of uh, made sulfuron. This one will give you excellent control. You also need to add your weighting agents like Sanawit. Another tank mix that you can do is mixing dicamba and MCPA at 250 and 750 mils respectively. And uh, this mixture will also control uh, difficult weeds like your chinopodium album and kalintoga paviflora. Then there are important insect pests that affect uh, your crop. The, the likes of your aphids, uh, the likes of armyworm, your poem, even your weevils and a larger grain polar. When it comes to aphids, we are saying you may come in with your dimethoid and uh, you may also come in with, with thunder. Uh, for armyworm, there's cabareo. You can come in with spike extra. Spike extra also does your, your aphids. And uh, when it comes uh, to bowens, you can also invoke the use of thunder. Uh, uh, for weevils and uh, LGB, we are saying come in and get uh, actually gold dust. That grain protectant is very important uh, in your wheat uh, for the control of weevils and, uh, and uh, LGB. Uh, this is your acid. And uh, as you know, it, they don't cause much of physical damage, but they are important in spreading uh, uh, aphids, they, sorry, viruses, the worst viruses. And uh, it is the viruses that we don't want in our crop. And uh, all viral diseases have no cure. So we don't need aphids in our crops. Your armyworm, your armyworm uh, uh, eats or feeds on the leaves, thereby reducing a uh, surface area for, for photosynthesis. Once you lose your leaves, you would have lost your, your kitchen where food is manufactured. So ultimately, your yield will be affected. Uh, and we come to diseases. There are very important diseases in wheat, which include your stem rust. And we have a number of solutions for you where we have, uh, this group is called the triazo. Propiconazole, your tepiconazole, your tridemino, or our triazoles. We have these ones in stock. There's another very important disease called dumping off. Dumping off is a disease that affects mainly your young seedlings and uh, caused by a number of uh, different soil uh, fungi, including your rhizoctonia. Uh, you may come in with your baiting as a seed dressing. It's very important that you plant a treated seed so you can treat your seed at the farm with baiting. Then there's a, pro there's a disease called powdery mildew and another one called rust. They are all fungal diseases and we have a a product called Delita. Delita is a mixture of uh, azoxystrobin and diphenoconazole. It's very powerful. Uh, we have it at ZFC. You can apply it at 500 mils uh, per hectare. Uh, you can also come in with your tridemino. Tridemino is your is, is your shavet. This is your thing of once you lose your seedlings, you will have lost your your yield. This is right. If you have a leaf that is affected by rust, you can see that photosynthesis is definitely affected because that leaf is no longer green. So we don't want rust in our field as well. This powder milk. 
if it is left uncontrolled, all the leaves will end up drying and we don't want to lose our leaves because uh, that's where uh, your, 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 your assimilates or feed is, 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 is produced. So we have to make sure that we keep it under, under control. I think because of our time, I'll end here, uh, Mkoma Rollins. Thank you for your time. Thank you uh, very much, uh, Mr. Zwanai, for that great uh, presentation. You touched on important factors and issues there, and indeed, uh, crop uh, nutrition and protection are key to the success of uh, our wheat production uh, business. Farmers, you agree with me that agriculture is a unique sector mainly because of its dependency on the climate and uh, biological variables. It is also unique due to its uh, complex interplay of both uh, biological and market forces. And that is at different stages of its very long uh, value chain. So it is therefore important to identify and evaluate the risks. How can this be done? Desmond Zemondo, a qualified and experienced agronomist with Zimnat THI Insurance will help us in answering this uh, key question. Desmond, uh, you can go for it. Hello, farmers. Thank you, uh, Rollins. Are you hearing me? Sure, we can you uh, we can hear you clearly. Please uh, go ahead. Thank you very thank you very much. Because of our time, I will straight away uh, share my my screen. Uh, Is it visible? Yes, we can see it now. You can see it now. So I'll uh, I will leave time to Oliver to give us introductory remarks, and I will take it up from there. Thank you, Rollins. Um, thank you, farmers and participants present. Basically, I'll touch on the introduction. Uh, THI Insurance is a fully fledged insurance company, which is part of Zimnat and some group of companies. We have got a history that back to 1938, when we started as a cooperative for farmers. We have grown into a fully fledged insurance company, offering all insurance products. And one of the strengths for THI is paying claims in time. I'm sure you're all aware that this year has been a tough year in terms of tobacco health, but we boast of having paid our claims up to 90%. So the reason why you would want to choose THI is because we are trustworthy, transparent, and we meet our obligations. Without wasting much of your time, I'll hand over to Desmond for the technical explanation of the risk management of wheat. Thank you very much, uh, Oliver. Apart from all what Oliver has mentioned, you will discover that we are also into livestock insurance, crops insurance, farm machinery and equipment, and also farm stocks and buildings. So when you need your insurance, uh, as far as agriculture is concerned, you can conduct THI insurance and we all we have all those uh, products on offer. I will go straight away to risk management issues uh, uh, to do with the agriculture and which included. Uh, the reason why uh, as the um, uh, agricultural risk uh, managers, uh, we are concerned with uh, risk management is that uh, agriculture in Zimbabwe uh, forms the backbone of our economy and it is actually the mainstay of the economy of Zimbabwe. It contributes significantly to GDP, about 20%. Also, most of our people in Zimbabwe, they uh, rely on agriculture directly or indirectly, about 70% of the population. I'll go straight away to uh, the wheat itself. I think it has been introduced so far by the previous presenters, uh, what uh, this crop is all about in Zimbabwe is the second most important cereal crop and staple food crop in Zimbabwe. And it is mostly grown by commercial farmers because of the uh, capital develop, uh, requirements that are needed for the development of uh, dams 
irrigation, and uh, also uh, all sorts of uh, uh, infrastructure that is required for for water uh, uh, water supply, uh, since which is actually grown in in winter. Small scale farmers also grow this crop, of course, but at uh, a smaller scale. So I will actually go into the risks themselves. Uh, the risks that I'm going to focus on are production risks uh, uh, of, of wheat production, which means I'm just going to develop much on the production itself, not on the market, uh, not on the financial aspect or on HR aspect of the farm, but on production risks that takes place at the farm. Much has been said about agronomy uh, related risks. I'm going to also look at the irrigation risks the fire risk, the, the harvesting risks themselves, frost and wind and hail. As I have already alluded that uh, the first presenter touched on ag agronomy. As insurers and risk managers, we are very much concerned. We are very much concerned about uh, management of risk. Uh, we do not just come in uh, because there is a, a, a loss that has taken place uh, which we are all uh, quite used to, uh, such as frost, such as hail and wind. But also we are concerned about the agronomic practices that the farmers uh, get involved in when they are growing their crops uh, at the farm. So much has been said uh, as far as this agronomic issue has been uh, 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 is concerned, but of much importance is also the land preparation that has been mentioned some farmers are practicing conservation tillage, but we are saying it is important for you to consider conservation tillage where you find that the previous crop was well prepared for. Timely planning has also been uh, uh, spoken about, which is also important for you to plant your wheat within the window period. Not planting your wheat within the window period can ex expose your wheat to uh, certain risks, risks such as hail and wind, including the frost itself and other uh, harvesting related risks. As far as irrigation is concerned, I think the first presenter again spoke much about this, but what I only have to emphasize is that farmers have got to know how much water in terms of the water sources they have before they embark on, on wheat. This is because uh, of the fluctuating nature of uh, some of the resources that we have sources of water that we have. Uh, water tables, they, they fluctuate. Rivers at times, they also fluctuate. Rainfall itself uh, leading into various levels of dam, uh, dam capacities uh, during the season. So farmers should ask themselves if they have enough water, especially when they are starting to embark on wheat production. They should do um, irrigation designing uh, so that they actually they are actually very sure in terms of the water supply. Uh, with me there, you can see the pictures there. Uh, we are trying to demonstrate some of the effects that happens agronomically, and also the effects that happens uh, in terms of moisture stress uh, uh, as we move around to do some risk surveys. So um, you, on the top there. Uh, where my pointer is pointing, you can see that the farmer was trying to do conservation tillage, which is not very good because you end up uh, failing to, the crop end up failing to, to germinate. Uh, bottom there, you can see that the crop is looking good, but there is a bit of uh, some moisture stress, uh, uh, moist, moisture stress uh, indications on the crop. Then on the uh, far right there, you can see that the crop there is not very good. So when I'm talking of these agronomic risks and or moisture risks, these are most important things to take note of as you grow your wheat. How do you manage your irrigation uh, uh, risks? Uh, you have to make sure that you have got a generator that is, that is a standby generator so that when you have power cuts, you do not have uh, challenges of continuing with your irrigation. Uh, power cuts can be a problem uh, in Zimbabwe. It can be due to inadequate electricity generation or due to um, uh, faults that develop uh, from the SESA side. Um, also inspect and effectively repair pumps. 
before you start off your season. Uh, you should also try by all means to use uh, moisture uh, level detecting method such as your fuel method, your tensiometers, your evaporation dish. I think we, most farmers used to use this uh, method to, to, to actually um, detect moisture levels. Adequate labor is needed for changing your irrigation pipes in the case of sprinkler irrigation. Uh, also, uh, the use of center pivots has also improved uh, the risk itself uh, in terms of irrigation because they are more efficient than sprinkler irrigation. Then we go to fire. I think most of the people know what fire can do to our wheat, especially during the time when the wheat is now drying off and it is ready for harvesting. This is where we have most of the failed, failed fires taking place. So it is important uh, for the farmers to take note of this point. The most important control is to do your fire guards. Fire guards around the farm will control fire, which will be coming from the veld outside the farm. Fire guard around the fields themselves, the lands, will also control fire, uh, which can start from within the fields themselves or outside the field. So it is important for the farmers to actually uh, consider the, those risk management aspects. It is also important to train your firefighting teams on the or install equipment for firefighting in order to alleviate this risk. And most importantly, uh, you have to ensure your crop against fire. We go to harvest the related uh, risk. Uh, in this case, it is important for you to make sure that you have your combine harvester well in advance uh, so that um, when it comes to the harvesting time, you don't look around uh, for the harvester and you don't find it because this puts your crop into risk. The combine harvesters must also be well uh, maintained so that um, you avoid those fires that can start within the field when you are doing your harvesting. Frost is one of the, uh, the, the perils that is actually a major in terms of wheat production. And this is what most of the farmers are afraid of. And in most cases, there is nothing that farmers can do when frost comes into their fields. It is important for the farmers to note that when there are clear skies uh, during a wheat planting, uh, and the temperatures are very low, there is a likeliness that uh, there's going to be frost. It is also important for the farmers to know that uh, frost favors uh, topography itself. It is influenced by topography. Uh, and also uh, lands that are situated to the water bodies, they are more prone to frost uh, compared to lands that are not situated to water bodies. Um, frost can damage crops in three stages. Uh, there's what is called freezing damage, uh, cold damage, and desiccation damage. But uh, frost uh, affects the leaves, it affects the, the, the seed, it affects the flowers, it affects the ovaries of the, 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 the plant. And most importantly, when the crop is affected during the reproduction uh, uh, phase, that's where frost is more uh, detrimental and might result to risk. With me there, there is a graph which is showing the uh, point at which frost is most dangerous for our wheat crop. That is during the reproductive stage. Um, there are also methods or risk management options that we, we, can, we can manipulate in order to fight against frost. The time of planting is very important. Irrigation management is very important. Knowing the, uh, the, the location where you are, whether that place is uh, prone uh, or uh, frost is prevalent in those areas is also very important as farmers. Ultimately, it is also important for you to take up your insurance to guard yourself against frost. Hail damage, uh, rain can take place in, in, in winter, even though we least expect it to rain um, uh, in, in winter. Hail can damage your crop, it can damage your leaves, it can damage again your, your, your stems, it can damage the heads, it can also uh, lead uh, to loss of yield even after your crop is matured. 
But the most important part where we have losses most is during the reproductive stages. When it is when it is hit during the early stages, we may not as much uh, have as much uh, losses as we might have later in the season. Again, it is also advised to take up insurance for this period. Then we come to your weight insurance. There's in, uh, the uncertainty and the fortuitous nature of the weather-related fundamental risk it makes it impossible to control all the risks as the farm. And hence, it is important for the farmers to think about taking up insurance of which THI is there for you to give you the products of insurance that are so important. What does insurance uh, for wheat cover? It covers your hail and windstorm, it covers your frost, it covers your fire, it covers the, um, uh, the, 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 your pre-germination, uh, especially forced germination due to early rains, malicious damage, transit risks when you are ferrying your wheat from the farm to the marketplace and any other accidental damage that might happen to your, to your, to your wheat. Um, as a farmer taking up insurance, you also have to understand uh, the what what how for how much you are being covered on the on the on the on, on your crop. So the sum insured has to be calculated. So I'm demo, I'm demonstrating here that the sum insured is calculated from your planted area in hectares times the long term average yield times uh, 0 0.7 percent 0 0.7 uh, times the pre agreed value. A pattern uh, that you expect to sell your wheat at. So, uh, insurers or underwriters will calculate uh, this uh, sum insured so that when this is uh, put into place, you really know how much your uh, insurance is worth. It. Claim settlement when you have uh, your frost, when you are affected by, by hail or affected by any other insured peril, you have to notify. Uh, the company in 48 hours. You also have to notify the date of loss, uh, the time of loss, the cause of loss, the insured crops are also affected. Also uh, try by all means to help the assessor for any other information they would need when uh, they are coming to do the assessment of your crop. What is important is that you have to make sure that you notify your your. Your, your assessors and your, your company of the loss that has taken place at your farm. Assessors will verify and compute the damage. And um, assessors, uh, at times, they can defer the assessment depending on what they see at the farm and the methods they are using. So we, we actually encourage the farmers to be as patient as possible if assessments and computation of their losses is being done. But however, payments will always be done at the end of the season when the farmer is sold uh, all his crop and actually the price uh, per ton is now known. Uh, there are specific conditions that we should also uh, be able to understand as we take our insurance. Uh, the maximum liability will be the sum insured that we talked about. Also the crop's liability is also equivalent to what we have calculated that it is equivalent to 70% of the long-term average uh, yield uh, times the number of hectares uh, times the uh, cost of your wheat uh, per ton. Uh, you might be staking your wheat uh, somewhere else before you de deliver it to for your selling. That is stake which is being uh, out, being outside should not be more than 20% of the sum insured. We do this so as to uh, protect uh, the wheat from more risks. So it is advisable to do more stakes than to do just one stake because when fire happens, it will bend the whole thing. Land limit is 60 hectares. We advise that farmers after every 60 hectares, you separate the lands so that when fire comes, it doesn't just destroy the whole field. Harvesting deadline is normally the end of October up to the mid of uh, November. Transit risks, of course, taking your wheat to the uh, depots for selling can go as far as 31 December. If you need any extension, 
you can consult your insurers, uh, especially THI, so that they extend. Uh, maybe for some reasons, you are still keeping your crop there. Uh, again, good agronomic practices are not, uh, insurers do not uh, insure for poor agronomic practices, as I have already stated uh, up there. They, you are expected to practice good agronomic practice and to protect your, your crop. The application procedure. Uh, apparently, we are taking farmers who are going to be insuring their wheat, and it is the right time to consider uh, insurance. So you call THI insurance on the numbers that we are going to put them. You fill in the proposal form. You get a quotation for the proposed insurance cover. Then after that, the, you accept the offer after the quotation. The field survey, as I have already mentioned, that we don't insure the wheat that we don't know. We'll send our agronomists to come to the field. They look at the wheat to see everything has been followed. You pay the premium you sign the policy and get your copy. Thank you very much. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the presentation. Uh, many thanks uh, Desmond for such an informative uh, presentation on how we can uh, better manage the risks involved uh, in wheat production. And you did not only show us uh, how, but you also highlighted on the risks uh, involved. Uh, thank you very much uh, for uh, that uh, uh, great presentation. So we are now in the question and answer session and uh, many thanks to the comments and questions that you farmers have been sending through via the chat and comment uh, section. We've received a lot of these, but because of our time, we randomly uh, pick a few. And uh, Desmond, whilst you are still there, um, there's a question here saying, what's the best time to get insurance for wheat? Best time, the best time to get your insurance for wheat is now. Surely we have challenges with farmers who want to come and get their insurance at the middle of the season when the wheat is already in the field or when they think that they might uh, fall into a risk. It is not advisable. The best time for you to get your wheat is now when you are actually doing your preparation for planting and all that. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you. Then another one uh, is from Mandimu Tsire. Mandimu Tsire says, many thanks Desmond for the great uh, presentation. It is, it is one thing that we overlook as farmers until disaster uh, strikes. Uh, can we please have your contacts? Okay. Yeah, my phone numbers are actually shown on the screen, uh, but uh, for the benefit of those who do not have the numbers, my numbers are 0774-457-050. I repeat again, my numbers are 0774-457-050. But you can also check on our website, also check on our social pages, our social media pages, such as Twitter, uh, Facebook, and LinkedIn. You can also find our contacts there. Thank you. Uh, perfect. Then another um, a question or rather a comment here is from uh, Susan Shiramba saying, which seed is not readily available in agricultural shops, specifically in Bulawayo? Please assist. Uh, I hope Wendy has noted that one. Then uh, from Maka, Maka says, is soil testing important in wheat farming? I'm sure Mr. Zwanai has touched on that one. Mr. Zwanai, um, I don't know if you would like to take that one. Soil uh, analysis is key, not only in wheat production, but in production of uh, all crops, because uh, that is when you understand the nutritional status of your soil, and uh, it also helps you to make good decision when it comes to a uh, fertilizer application. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Zawana. And whilst you are still there, Lionel says, uh, does foliar fertilizer work in wheat production? Precisely. I talked about foliar 15, uh, but we, we, we are saying you cannot rely exclusively on foliar fertilizers. They have to come in as supplements, especially when it comes to um, 
trace elements or micronutrient supply. As for other primary and the secondary nutrients, they can't uh, supply enough. You will have to apply your, your conventional fertilizers, then come in with foliar fertilizer as a supplements uh, and adding in your trace elements. All right, uh, thank you, Mr. Zwana, for taking that one. Then Ms. Kanengoni says, I think this will be our last one. How do we access the webinar recording? Okay, I'll take that one. Uh, if you are not already um, uh, on our mailing list, uh, please do share your address so that we can uh, send you the recording to the today's event. But if you are already subscribed, there's no need to we'll send the uh, recording in the next few days. So, this marks the end of our uh, business of wheat production webinar. We would like to uh, thank Zimnat THI Insurance, uh, CIDCO, uh, and ZFC for this uh, event. And many thanks to our presenters uh, for the great uh, presentations. Uh, and to our participants, thank you very much for uh, participating. And we hope that you have benefited from the great uh, presentations that we uh, had. And from Agribusiness Media, my name is Rollings. Enjoy your day. And all the best in your farm business. Thank you.